In this video, we're going to look quickly at the stereochem of enamines. Since we are introducing new double bonds in, um, we're going to consider a little bit about the stereochemistry. Simply put, you will often get a mixture. But how do you know which one is going to be preferred, which one is not? Um, and this really comes down to uh, kind of the specifics of each, where you might be able to predict um, having a preference for one over the other. For example, if we take the following ketone and we react it with an amine, secondary one, let's go ahead and use um, piperidine here. So we have our H, H plus. We're going to make an enamine because this is a secondary amine, right? It's got two carbon units. When we're looking at it, in this case, we're also looking at regiochemistry. Like, which side are we going to take the proton from when this happens? So we know we end up with, I'm going to just draw our, our intermediate here. We have this charge species. So what it comes down to is which proton is going to be removed um, such that we end up with either the uh, E in antimer, or the Z antimer, or which side, anyway, for, for the protons, right? Because we have proton on the left, proton on the right, both of those can be removed. So ketones, it can be a little bit more troublesome. And so it really comes down to how bulky are your substituents, and uh, is there going to be a thermodynamic benefit from eliminating from either side? Remember, when we talk about the stability of alkenes in general, we're looking at more substituted is better. And if we remove the proton on the left, if we do that, we're going to end up conjugating uh, towards our benzene. So we're going to make this into a conjugated system. So that'll be perf that's the good thing, right? If we eliminated the other side, we would end up with this um, this alkene in the middle of nowhere, this exocyclic alkene. Um, not so stable. So hopefully right away we can see that this one will prefer uh, to be uh, on the side of the molecule closer to the benzene because that is more stable. It's conjugated um, and it's also more substituted, right? It's tri-sub versus di-sub. So now we have to think, cons uh, consider stereochemistry. Considering that both of our bulks, are, sorry, both of our groups are quite bulky here, uh, in this case, we're probably not going to get too much of the Z alkene. We will probably get a lot more of the E alkene, in which we still have our alkene there, but our benzene will be on the opposite side. So um, we still have all the conjugation and the good stuff as before. We just um, we're going to end up rotating our molecule before we go ahead and eliminate, because uh, now that we have those two bulky group trans to each other, uh, forming the E alkene uh, or enamine in this case, uh, that's going to be the preferred form. So uh, we just want to consider these things again. Uh, and this is something we're going to deal with when we talk about enolates. So I just want to put it in your minds um, right now uh, so we can start thinking about stereochemistry when this sort of reaction happens. So the first things to consider is, is there a better H to remove? That's your regiochemistry. So which side is the alkene going to form on? is going to form on the left side or the right side of our um, imminium. That's what the per, this charge one is called, imminium. And now that we know which side it's going to be, so we're looking at stability of the products there. Uh, again, there is some, something to say about kinetics versus thermodynamics. The one on the right is much less sterically hindered, very easy to remove that. So if you have a very strong base, um, at low temperatures, we're probably going to get the uh, less stable product, the kinetic product, um, which will have the alkene on the other side. 
But uh, generally speaking, we're going to go for thermodynamics here because these are usually heated reactions. So once you've identified which side gives you the better thermodynamics, which gives you the better substitution on your alkene, then you want to think, okay, uh, is there a stereochemical preference? And so we want to look at the, the, the groups. Are they bulky? How bulky are they? Is it a methyl group? Then it's not too much of a problem. Uh, are we looking at uh, a phenyl and this uh, cyclo -pro uh, cyclopentane equivalent? Those are pretty bulky, and putting them next to each other is not really so good. But two methyl groups, there are worse things that could happen, right? Um, so not really the worst thing in the world to end up with um, a methyl group like we saw with some of the other ones. Yeah, a methyl group on the same side as another methyl group or as the nitrogen. Not not really the biggest deal in the world. So, um, so just keep these two things in mind. And so again, you're going to usually end up with a mixture uh, unless you have a very obviously superior regiochemical outcome. Like in this case, we're probably only going to get this one because it's conjugated with the benzene. So that's a, a very good thing. By the way, that chart should not be there anymore. You know, my lone pair. So, um, which can resonate into the benzene, in fact, now because it's conjugated. Um, and then we have to think about the stereochemistry. It really is a subjective consideration of what's the bulkiness? How bulky are they? Are they so significantly bulky that they would prefer to be on opposite sides uh, as each other? It's uh, simply a case by case evaluation. So you will still probably end up with a mixture, but there's probably going to be a preference in a situation like this, where you have fairly bulky groups. And so this section, um, I, I really just wanted to kind of set the stage for our future uh, videos, a couple chapters down the line. So uh, just a couple of things to keep in mind when you're uh, considering enamine formation. And so in our next video, uh, we're going to go over um, kind of a special case with the hydrozone uh, and how we can use that to eliminate uh, a carbonyl from a compound.